today's video is sponsored by Element, an electrolyte drink mix I drink every single day. More on them coming up. One of my favorite practical things to do is to take leftovers or food that I've already made that's in the fridge and spin it into a new meal. The only time I ever really feel satiated and satisfied is when I have plenty of good fats in my diet. But you can hear how crunchy these are. They're gonna be crunchy and caramely. This week, I'm gonna take you along with me for a ton of cooking and show you guys what we're eating these weeks when it's really hot outside and we wanna eat mostly cold things. So I'm not cooking a bunch of really hot dishes this week. I'm gonna keep it lighter and cool because it's just so hot outside that we're just craving the cool, lighter foods. So I'm gonna take you through a ton of different meals this week as much as I can and show you what we really eat in a week. If you're new to my channel, I'm Elizabeth and I am a mom. I have a family of six and all my kids are homeschooled. So I'm always at home cooking different things for the family. I spend a lot of time in the kitchen and I like to make food that's just really easy and approachable. And that's just wholesome, real, everyday kind of food. So this is a ton of inspiration for your family or if it's just you, there's equally enough inspiration for one to two people too. Cause sometimes I'll cook for me and the kids and my husband or sometimes I'll just cook for for me and my husband and the kids will eat something different or that's already in the fridge. So there's a lot going on and hopefully there's a lot that you can take inspiration from for yourself. So this morning we're starting out this video on a Monday and I have some sourdough bread that I made over the weekend. And so this morning I like to start with a, just an easy breakfast when we're getting back into the swing of things. And so I took some of that sourdough bread and I just toasted it in the oven. And then I'm making a simple variation of avocado toast that's just a little more summer inspired. So I'm frying up some eggs, I'm putting some fresh corn from the farmer's market, a little red onion, and then I'm gonna put those eggs right over the top and just sprinkle it or drizzle it with a little bit of hot sauce and it's like this delicious kind of southwestern avocado toast really easy and nice and cool for those hot summer mornings so i'm gonna have this the kids will have it without hot sauce and it's super filling and yummy Tomorrow I'm making some sourdough sandwiches. So I've had my sourdough starter. Well, actually this isn't a starter. This is kind of a pre-ferment, which means I took some of my starter and I put it in this jar and then I fed it with a certain amount of grams of water and flour to sourdough starter. And then I'm gonna use the whole amount of this to dump it in. So in my fridge, I still have another jar just like this full of my sourdough starter, but I'm using that as a separate starter that I don't have to worry about. And then I can just use the one that that I made over there. Dump it in the whole recipe so that way if I'm telling you how to make this recipe it's really easy. All you'll do is take this whole amount and dump it in as your sourdough starter component and I'm gonna make it right now. This is my absolute favorite fluffy sourdough sandwich bread so I'm gonna show you how to make it really easily. And if my voice sounds a little funny, it's because I'm getting over a summer cold right now. It's that time of year and I feel like we always end up getting some sort of summer sickness. So here's my starter. It's ready to go. It's been sitting there all day in the heat. It just makes the sourdough go crazy. So this is ready to go. So I'm going to go grab my stand mixer bowl. I use that to make this bread recipe. You want to make sure there's lots of air in it. So it's best to do it in a stand mixer. And so I'm going to go grab that bowl and get it started. This is one of my absolute favorite sourdough recipes and it uses a little bit of honey and butter and milk. So it's almost like a sourdough Amish bread. And I'm gonna melt a little bit of milk and honey and I measure it out on my digital scale. So it's really accurate every time. I never have to worry about it turning out. So I'll go ahead and grab all my ingredients and then we'll mix it up. I like to measure out my sourdough on a digital scale. So I'll leave those measurements in grams down below for the pre-ferment. But now I'm getting started on the wet ingredients that I'm gonna heat on the stove. So I do 14 grams of salted butter, 42 grams of raw honey, six grams of salt, 187 grams of whole milk. And I just put that on the stove for a few minutes and let that warm up. And I go ahead and put my salt in this part and it never causes any issues with the rising. So I just go ahead and put it in here. You just need a little bit anyway. So it's not a very salty bread. It's more of a sweet bread. So you just need a little bit of salt to balance it. 
So now I'll just let my milk and my butter and honey just heat up over really low heat. You just want it to get a little bit warm. You don't want it to start boiling or simmering, just barely warmed up. And just enough to let the butter start to soften and melt. I just like to give it a little stir to let the honey start to melt and to kind of help the butter along because I want to stop it just when it starts to get warm. That way I don't have to wait a long time for the milk and everything to cool down before I can add it into the sourdough starter. That way it doesn't kill those live cultures because then our bread won't rise properly. So just barely heat it and you want to make sure you could easily stick your finger into it and it doesn't bother your finger. It's nice and cool. Just a little bit lukewarm is good. It doesn't really matter how you layer up the ingredients in the bowl, but I like to take my big stand mixer bowl and then I'll put it on my digital scale and go ahead and zero that out. And then I like to put in the warm milk and honey mixture in first, and then I'll dump in that leaven just to make sure that it's floating and is gonna activate and kind of uh, raise our bread and ferment it. So I like to do that first just to make sure, just in case I'd rather not have added in all my flour and then have to throw the whole recipe out. I would rather make sure that my starter is nice and active. And you could also do a float test just in a little jar of water, just fill it up with water, and then you can add a drop of your sourdough leaven here or pre-ferment whatever you want to call it and just test it to make sure it's floating that's the best way not to ruin a whole batch of sourdough so i do that and then i'll just come over here i like to use all-purpose flour just for a regular bread recipe so i'll just measure up my flour and then i'll put that in my stand mixer with my dough hook that's the spirally one and i'll just let that go for quite a while usually a little over 10 minutes until the dough is nice and stretched out and then it's ready to go. So it's really simple. Basically just throw everything in the bowl and have that mix and come together. Okay, put my hair up a little more. It's 100 degrees today, so I'm really glad I'm not baking this off until the morning when it's cooler. So I have my e my egg, my milk and my butter and honey mixture here, and it's a little bit too warm, but I'm gonna go ahead and add it in here. And I actually made the milk mixture just a little too warm. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and measure the flour in there first. I kind of take back what I said because that flour that's cold and room temperature, it will kind of help to bring down the temperature of the milk and make it cooler. So that way I can just go ahead and throw in that sourdough. So I'm gonna turn my scale on because it turned off by itself. So you wanna check that. And then just set your mixture back on here, press tear, and now we'll add in that flour. I like to add about 350 grams of all-purpose flour, and then sometimes I'll add just a little bit extra. If it's in the stand mixer and hasn't quite come into a ball, I'll just sprinkle in a little more. Actually, it's perfect, there we go. So it should look like that. I'll just give it a little stir. This is my favorite little stirring spatula. It's a mini one. So I'll just take it off the scale and give it a little stir here and mix it together to cool it down. So now I have this nice shaggy dough, that's good. You can feel it, it's just warm, but it's not hot at all. So now that that's all mixed together, I'm gonna go ahead and add in this pre-ferment and just scrape out the whole jar and make sure that you've reserved your sourdough starter before you get rid of everything. If you forgot, then just take out a little bit. You only need about 35 grams and that will give you enough to feed and have a new sourdough starter anyway. So you can kind of help it even if you made a little mistake. I've done that before, no big deal. Okay, scrape that up pretty well. It looks like this. So now it's ready to be mixed up in the stand mixer. So after I put my bread in my stand mixer, I'll put it on a medium low speed and let that mix for about 10 to 12 minutes until it's pulled off the sides. And if it gets to about 11 minutes and it hasn't pulled off the side yet, I'll sprinkle in about, I don't know, maybe like a quarter cup of flour and then it'll pull all together and I'll coax that into my little dough tub here and I'll let that sit out to rise for a few hours. And if it's late at night, I'll just pop it in the fridge until the morning. 
Okay, hopefully you can hear me because my dishwasher is running right below me, but I'm gonna try to walk you through lunch today. So I have my sourdough sandwich bread in the oven that's almost done, and I'll let that cool for a while before I make lunch. But I'm wanting to make a spread for our lunch to go on the fresh bread, and I have some heirloom tomatoes. This one is from the garden. This is my first heirloom tomato this summer, so I'm super excited to eat that. And so I wanna make some really simple sandwiches, kind of old fashioned style, and put it on my homemade sourdough bread. So I wanna make a spread to go on it, but I need a lot of mayo, and I like to use avocado oil mayo, so it's a little bit more expensive. So I'm gonna try making it today. I picked up this big jug of avocado oil from Costco. I don't think it's the best quality ever, so you might wanna get it from somewhere else, but it was such a good deal, and I figured it's still better than store-bought, and it's gonna save us a lot of money this week. So I went ahead and picked up this big big two liter bottle of avocado oil. So I'm gonna use that and I just use it cause it's a healthier fat than your typical canola oil and soybean oil. I try to avoid those at all costs. And so I've got a big mason jar here. This is a 32 ounce mason jar and I'm gonna make my own. So all I need is my avocado oil. You can add lemon juice or I'm gonna use some organic white vinegar, just really simple. And then I've got a little bit of my Celtic sea salt, and then you can use a little bit of Dijon mustard, but I don't have that right now. And honestly, I like the flavor of this better. So I'm using just an organic honey mustard, just a little bit of that. And then if you wanna keep it fresher longer and you're not gonna go through it very quickly, then you can use a little bit of rosemary extract. I learned that that's a little tip from one of you in the comments, you said use rosemary extract. And if you look up ingredient labels on products like Primal Kitchen's mayo, they have rosemary extract in there too. So you can definitely try that out. I'm also gonna need a couple egg yolks. So I'm gonna grab those out of the fridge. Those are just for my chickens. And I keep them in the fridge simply because if I leave them on the counter, I know that one of my kids is gonna jump up and crush them. You can leave fresh eggs on the counter and I certainly could, but I just know that it's gonna end in and <laughs> <laughs> an eggy mess. So I'm gonna go grab a couple of those. Okay, my bread timer just went off, so I'm gonna pull my sourdough sandwich bread out. It looks beautiful, I love this bread recipe. You can always take just a little bit of butter and smear it on the top to give it a nice shine, a little buttery taste. So I like to really, really simply just rub it with a little bit of butter and that'll do the trick. So I'm just gonna let this bread cool in the pan for about five minutes and then I'll turn it out and leave it to cool until right before we're ready to make our sandwiches. So I'll let it sit for just a couple hours. You're gonna either wanna make this in a food processor or I'm gonna make it in a mason jar, which I'll store it in, but I'll just use my immersion blender. This is from Nutramil and I'm just gonna use this because it makes it really easy cleanup and the process goes quickly. So I'm gonna crack in a couple egg yolks and I'll save the egg white because I can always throw that in a quiche or rub it on top of scones for a little shine. Here we go. Okay, so I'm gonna crack in my egg whites. I just take my egg shell and I crack it and then I'll dump it back and forth and that kind of releases the egg white from the egg yolk. And I'm gonna add that straight into my mason jar. Okay, so I'll save the egg whites for later. And then now in the bottom of my jar, I have my egg whites. No, I have my egg yolks. And I'm gonna go ahead and add my salt. And I'm making a double batch of this today, so I'll leave my exact recipe down below so you don't have to try to follow what I'm doing. You could make a smaller batch or a bigger batch, whatever you want. So I'm just gonna add in a little bit of salt into my eggs and a little bit of that honey mustard. Now I'll add in my white vinegar, but you could also use lemon juice. You could probably even use apple cider vinegar, but it's gonna have more of a taste. I kind of like just the clean taste of regular white vinegar. So I'm gonna add in my vinegar. And then the last thing I'll add in is all of my avocado oil.
And then to actually make the mayo, once all the ingredients are in the jar, you're just gonna take your immersion blender and put it all the way at the bottom where the egg yolks are and kind of start pulsing it until they turn like a creamy pale yellow color. And then you'll slowly move your immersion blender up. And if you're in the food processor, you're basically just gonna pulse it and then whirl it until it's the texture of mayo. So I have all my avocado oil here, the other ingredients in the bottom, and then it should take about 30 seconds and we'll have homemade mayo. So there we go. So now we can see the egg yolks are nice and creamy and pale yellow. So now I'll just slowly move up. And now I'll just scrape it off with one of my little mini spatulas. I love these for jobs like this. And that was the easiest mayo ever. And I love how beautiful the color is. It's that egg yolk from my chickens, but if you use good quality eggs, like the Vital Farms eggs or Happy Eggs, those are some of my favorite grocery store eggs. Let's see if you can see that. That was just the most beautiful color. And it smells like an amazing mayo. I can already tell. Scrape that all off so we don't waste any of all that goodness. And then you could put it in the fridge and kind of let the flavors meld, but since I'm gonna put this in a mix or a dip anyway, it doesn't really matter. So I'm gonna put it in the mix and then put it in the fridge anyway. Okay, there we go. And it can just stay in the mason jar, which I love. So there we go. That was so easy. I can't believe how quickly that came together. And I love how great quality this is gonna be nice and healthy. This is a great healthy fat and I'm always trying to figure out different ways to get in new healthy fats because I feel like if I don't have enough of the good stuff then I end up being hungry all the time. So the only time I ever really feel satiated and satisfied is when I have plenty of good fats in my diet. So lunch today is gonna be homemade pimento cheese and heirloom tomato on some of that sourdough bread. Delicious, it's like such a simple lunch, but I'm so excited. I have a little bit of cheese. I'll be using this cheese and this cheese. And then I also just have a brick of cream cheese I'm gonna use. And then I have a jar or a can of pimentos. I know I bought it, but I can't find it. So I'm gonna use these roasted red peppers from Sprouts right here. That will work as my pimentos. I'll just dice it up and it'll work the same. And then I'm gonna need just a couple tablespoons of diced onion, not much at all. So I'm actually gonna use one of my onions that came out of my garden. I think I've pulled about a hundred of these lately. Some of them are really small like this, but it comes in good use for recipes. So I have them all curing outside and drying so that I can store them, but I'm gonna use this one today since I have it and since I really only need about two tablespoons. So I'm gonna go ahead and start by mixing up Oh, and of course my homemade mayo we just made. I forgot, that's also one of the main ingredients. So I'm gonna start by kind of mashing up this cream cheese. I can't get it open. You wanna make sure this is room temperature, but I forgot to make sure it was room temp. But I think honestly, since it's so hot in here in summertime that we're gonna be fine with this. So I'm gonna take half of a brick of cream cheese, put it straight into my bowl. And I'm just gonna start by giving that a mash, that way I can kind of get that to soften up a little bit. But once we add in that grated cheese, it becomes easier to kind of mash the cream cheese and to get it to the right consistency anyway. Or you could always pop it in the oven or the microwave for just like two seconds and kind of soften it up. So to start making this absolutely fantastic pimento cheese, I just mixed together that cream cheese that was softened along with about half a cup of my avocado oil mayo. And then I just mix that together real well. And then I'll season that with some salt and a little bit of garlic powder. And this kind of works as the dressing for our cheese. And so I put a bunch of seasoning in that. You want it to have good flavor. And then just mix that all together again. 
Then I grab my box grater and I just grated up both of those blocks of cheese. You wanna make sure that you're using cheese that's straight from the block because anytime you buy it pre-shredded, it's gonna have little agents in there to keep it from caking together. After my cheese was all grated, then I just took my onion and I grated that up too on the same box grater. And then I'm gonna use one or two of these roasted red peppers just so I have a few tablespoons of diced pimentos. And I'll add that in and mix it all together. And then we'll just put it in the fridge and let it chill until it's ready to serve for lunch. These smell so good. I already know that this lunch is going to be delicious. This is really one good example of how I like to cook. I like to just eat real foods. I don't like to eat so-called diet foods. I like to just stick to real wholesome foods with good quality ingredients. So a lot of the time, if you buy a pimento cheese from the grocery store, if you take a look at the ingredient list, you're gonna find a lot of things that are gonna make you really inflamed. Versus when you make it at home and you can use good quality ingredients, it's actually gonna do the opposite to your body and it's gonna give it really clean fuel and just makes your body feel completely different. So it can be the same exact food Food, but really turn out completely differently when you make it at home yourself. Today I'm gonna be making a really easy summery salad for lunch and I even have some peaches that I'm gonna use up and I'm gonna show you how I like to put them in the salad. But before I do that, I wanna tell you more about today's video sponsor, which is Element. Element is a zero sugar electrolyte drink mix. I drink it all the time. I always have it in my water bottle. It comes in these little packets and it's full of sodium, magnesium, and potassium. So I just dump that in there with some water and ice and I shake it up. It's great because it helps you eliminate that afternoon slump when you kind of just like lose your energy for the day. Instead of reaching for another cup of coffee, I always grab a bottle of Element. Electrolytes are great for promoting sleep and helping with brain fog. So there's a lot of different reasons that I love to drink them. And my kids and husband are always stealing them too. They give us tons of energy without all of the sugar that's in normal drinks and energy drinks. They also now have the Element Sparkling Waters, which if you haven't tried them, they're the 16 ounce, really bold tasting electrolytes that you have in a normal packet, but in a sparkling water form in a can. So if you're someone who loves sparkling waters, even things like energy drinks that have like a little bit of fizz to them, grab one of the Element Sparkling. They have a bunch of different flavors still. This is the watermelon, so perfect for summer. And they give you all of that energy. They're great to pair on the side of lunch or dinner. So if you wanna try out Element, you can get a free sample pack with any drink purchase. So I'll leave my link down for you in the description. Make sure you try out the sparkling waters too. And thanks again to Element for sponsoring today's video. The first thing I'm doing to make my salad is getting out a sheet pan and I'm gonna line it with a little bit of parchment paper. That way I can toast up some of these walnuts here and I'm gonna put maple syrup on them and make them kind of like a candied walnut. So sometimes I'll chop them up and make them just a little bit smaller which you can do, but I kind of like having big pieces of the crunchy nuts in my salad. I think it just adds a really good texture. So I'm just gonna sprinkle a bunch of these onto my baking sheet. And this really couldn't be easier. It's so simple and it's only a couple ingredients. So I'll just kind of gather them together on the baking sheet. Then I'll grab my maple syrup and I'll just drizzle this right over the top. Then just a little pinch of sea salt brings out like that salted car caramely flavor. Then I'll just toss that 
around and make sure that all the nuts get coated in that maple syrup. You could even sprinkle a little bit of cinnamon on here. That would be really good, especially in like fall salads and things like that when you have like roasted butternut squash or sweet potatoes and all those kind of warming flavors. It's really good with that. But right now I'm just gonna keep it simple today because I want the peaches to kind of be the star of the salad. So I'm just gonna spread these out a little bit so that they can evenly toast. Then I'll just put this straight into the oven and I'll just toast it for about five or 10 minutes. Once you start to smell it, that's how you know it's done. All right, so I have a big glass bowl here and I'm gonna go ahead and start making my dressing. And this is one of my favorites. It's one of those like really simple apple cider vinaigrette and kind of like garlicky dressings. So I'll link it down below. Here's the main ingredients here. I've got honey, my apple cider vinegar, and a little bit of olive oil, and one garlic clove. So I'm not gonna measure, I'm just gonna drizzle today. So a good amount of olive oil. Let me take this lid off, there we go. A splash of raw apple cider vinegar, and then a drizzle of some raw honey. Plenty of salt, because you really need to flavor veggies, even your salads, they need lots of salt to taste good. Pepper, a couple pinches. And then I used to always microplane my garlic, but it's so much easier to use a garlic press. So I'm just gonna put in one big garlic clove in here and crush that straight into my salad dressing. And then I also just like to add a little splash of filtered water to give it that kind of good consistency and make sure that the flavors in here are not too strong. I'll just mix this together right in the bowl. And I love making my dressings straight in the bowl because then I don't have to put it in the fridge and kind of have all those oils set up and get firm whenever you refrigerate oil. So if I just make a little batch straight in the bowl, it's so easy and it stays nice and fresh and I can make the exact quantity that I want. It just makes it really simple. I'll just stir that together. It really only takes just a second to make simple homemade vinaigrettes like this. So now I just have this head of lettuce that I got from the farmer's market and I'm gonna cut the end off and any little brown specks, I'll just kind of trim off. That can go to the chickens. And then I like to make four slices. So I'll slice around the core of the lettuce. I won't waste that, I'll just kind of cut that chunk out and then you have your core here. I like to cut my lettuce really small, that way if I'm feeding it to the kids, it, they can easily eat it with a spoon. And I'm just gonna go straight into the bowl here. I love anytime fruit is in season, putting fruit in the salad because I know that my kids will definitely be eating that if it has fresh fruit in it. So I'm just gonna give these peaches a little rinse. These walnuts are done toasting, so I just kind of stirred them up. They're nice and caramelized and sticky, and as they set, that will all kind of like firm up and get really crispy and crunchy. This is really gonna be a simple salad. So now that I have all these peaches sliced up, I'm gonna take a little bit of cheddar cheese and I'm just gonna make little bite-sized chunks and add that into the salad, almost like shaved Parmesan, but I'm gonna do a little bit of chunky cheddar in it and I think that's gonna go really well with the peaches and the crunchy walnuts. It's gonna be super easy. I'm just gonna go ahead and toss my lettuce in all that dressing so it can start kind of absorbing the flavors a little bit and then I'll top it with all of our toppings. I like to put fruit and things like cheese and kind of like the more tender things on top of the lettuce and then when people go to grab it, there's gonna be a bite of everything in each little portion. You can hear how crunchy these are. They're gonna be crunchy and caramely and delicious in this salad. Of course I have to sneak one. You can see there's like beautiful shards of maple syrup that's kind of like stuck on here and stuck all over those walnuts. And now I'm just gonna to top this beautiful summery salad with all those crunchy toasted maple walnuts. 
and you can kind of just take them with your hand and squeeze them and they'll kind of get crushed and have the perfect bite-sized pieces. And there we go, lunch is served. For dinner tonight, I'm gonna to be making some fish. We're in a church fast right now. You guys know, I've said before, I'm an Orthodox Christian. And so a lot of times during the year, we'll be fasting from meat and we try to fast from dairy, but it's a little bit tricky with the kids. So we still kind of eat that, but we definitely can cut out meat a lot more easily. So tonight I'm making a little bit of honey lime, kind of like a blackened salmon. So I'm just using a drizzle of honey over the top of the salmon, a squeeze of lime. And then I make my kind of own homemade version of a blackening seasoning and I just do a little bit of oregano, garlic powder, a little bit of paprika or smoked paprika, and salt and pepper. And it gives you that really delicious kind of blackened flavor. And then I'll just cook in the oven, get it nice and browned. And you can do this even from frozen. And I, I think I forgot to mention, but I also do chili powder too. So the mix of like smoked paprika and chili powder or even just regular paprika and chili powder makes the most amazing kind of smoky blackened taste. And then on top, I love to put just a little pat of butter instead of oil. I think the flavor of butter just kind of makes that blackening that much better. To go with that blackened salmon, I knew I wanted to make some sort of cold salad, and this is one of my favorites lately. It's amazing. So I have some really good corn that's been coming from the farmer's market. It's so sweet and crisp, and I'm pairing that with a bunch of little cherry tomatoes from my garden because they need to be used up, and this is the perfect application. So I just cut the corn off the cob starting in the halfway point because it makes it really easy for the corn not to fly everywhere and then have those cherry tomatoes. And then in my mixing bowl, I have avocado oil and some salt and pepper. And then I'm just taking some avocados. I've got two here that I'm using today and I'm just gonna take the seed out and then I'll cut it into each half will be six large cubes. I kind of like to leave it big and chunky because as you toss it in the salad with the corn and the tomatoes, you don't want that avocado to start kind of breaking down too much. You want to make sure that it still has nice big chunky pieces. So I like to put the avocado in there first and let that kind of get into that marinade with the lime juice. That way it's not going to turn brown on you and it's going to stay nice and fresh for as long as possible. Depending on your taste buds, you can add a little bit of chopped fresh cilantro like I did. And then I forgot to add in my crushed garlic into the dressing, but I love just a little bit of fresh garlic in pretty much any salad dressing I'm making. It's super healthy for you and adds amazing taste. So I just tossed that all together and I'm gonna pair that with this beautiful wild caught salmon. It's amazing and juicy and flaky every time. And pairing it with this fresh cold salad is just perfect. I love meals like this that are just lots of protein and healthy fats and fresh seasonal vegetables.
one of my favorite practical things to do is to take leftovers or food that I've already made that's in the fridge and spin it into a new meal. So not every day is a new exciting meal. That's just not practical. So a lot of times I'll take what's already in there and come up with a different way to pair it with something or prepare it. So this morning I'm gonna pair some of that pimento cheese that I made the other day and spin it into a breakfast. So I'm gonna take a few eggs and scramble them up and then butter my griddle real well and I'll just scramble these up. And this is one of my favorite kind of Southern style breakfast. Here in the Southeast, we see pimento cheese grits and omelets and things like that a lot. They'll even put it on sandwiches. And so this is kind of a healthier spin, but it's super filling and makes a great breakfast. There's so much flavor in that pimento cheese. So all it needs is a little bit of butter on the griddle and I'll just gently scramble those eggs. I just kind of like to push them around from one side to the other and it almost makes it between like a cross between a scrambled egg and an omelet and then I'll just top it with that pimento cheese and let it get nice and bubbly. Another really easy meal I just threw together this week was a little homemade Greek salad. I had some Greek dressing from a local place and then I threw in some of my garden fresh tomatoes and a little bit of peppers and feta cheese and I made another batch of salmon. This time I just used a little bit of Old Bay because it sounded good and so I paired that with a little bit of brown rice. So healthy and really it cooks up as fast as fast food. I hope you guys got a ton of inspiration today. Let me know what you want to make out of this video or if it inspires you in any way and don't forget to check out my link below to get your free element and thanks again to element for sponsoring today's video